Today I will be demonstrating how to use Agisoft PhotoScan to mask photos to produce a more accurate point cloud. If you haven't used Agisoft PhotoScan before, I highly recommend viewing my original overview of how to use Agisoft PhotoScan for surveying. In my earlier video, uh, Reconstructing a Riverbank Using Agisoft PhotoScan, I discussed using PhotoScan and Structure for Motion techniques to survey a riverbank. This is the same riverbank I produced from that information. Now, if you're going to survey a riverbank, the information that you'll need is not necessarily this. If you look to the sky, these blue portions in the top, you look to the trees, the green portions in the middle, you know that they are not representative of where the riverbank is. But right now, the program is reading it as such that they are parts of the riverbank, they form the mesh. If you look to the uh, photos, you can see inside the photos interspersed with them, there are various artifacts. To remove the artifacts, to edit out the sky, and to remove any other inaccuracies, we're going to need to use masking. And there are two main objects that would need to be masked. There are background objects, which can be the sky, the trees in this. And then there's just objects that you need to mask because they will produce an inaccurate point cloud, which in this case is the raft frame, the ore that appears. Those, because they are moving while these pictures are taken, they show up in multiple pictures, they can skew the point cloud and provide inaccurate points of reference. These two objects will be masked in similar ways with one slight difference in how, what you select while aligning the photos. But one of the main, the far more important issue of between the two, background or moving objects, are the moving objects. They can actually skew the point cloud. And if we look around here, you can actually look to see the bright yellow in the bottom left in the point cloud. That is from the ore frame, which is net means that we're producing nonsensical results. The ore frame that appears here is obviously not a part of the bank but the program treats it as such. Now that we have an idea that the point cloud has some inaccuracies that are not representative of the bank, we're going to need to identify where those inaccuracies are coming from and then mask them out. So one of the strong advantages that PhotoScan has is the ability to view points. And when you select view points, you'll see white points and blue points. White points are unique points that are just found in the image. Blue points are ones that are found in multiple images and are used to reconstruct. The, and by reconstruct I mean that they're used as common points. Now if once you have that selected you're going to start to use masking. One of the easiest ways of masking is just drawing a rectangle. And you select it and then highlight it and then click add to selection. Or, and just by doing that We've edited out the raft frame and much of the water. Now we can edit out, for example, the sky, some of the points there. I also like to use the intelligent scissors for trickier areas, such as this little ore frame that a rectangle would not work well for. And so then, now that we've masked it out, we're going to align the photos. And this, I haven't edited out any background points used for connections. So you select Align Photos determine your accuracy, whatever, and then you choose whether to constrain features by mask or not. In this case, we do need to constrain the features by mask because these points may be skewing the point cloud. If you had selected cons do not constrain features by mask, the points would have been used as common points, they just would not have appeared within the point cloud. So they would be reference points, but they would not be points to use for analysis. So that's where something like these trees would be very useful to have. But you're not going to want them in your actual point cloud. Now I'll provide an example of more specific masking. In this case, I'm masking out everything that is not a part of the bank that I want to study. As you can tell from here, I'm cutting out a lot of common points. So if you're doing this, and if you do not have the stuff like the ores and the frame in the image, do not constrain the images by mask. But as is, we do have that, so we can't use these background points as points.
points of reference. There. Now we have uh, the only the banks are visible if there are no moving objects in the frame and there are only background images then what I would select when I chose to realign the photos would not I would unclick the box of constrained features by mask so that the background can be used for its reference points but isn't included in the reconstruction So keep an image of what this looks like pre-masking. I also took the time to mask the 200 pictures to see what they would look like after masking, whether we'd be able to remove many, much of this mesh of sky and of trees. And here, if we view it as just a mesh of one color, it becomes apparent fairly quickly that you get a lot more, you get the bank, but much less of the sky, much less of the trees. If we view it in color, it'll look a lot more accurate. And I tried to mesh to the left, to the upstream side, much more specific, much more detailed masking, where off to the right, I opted for more just rectangles, sort of more cavalier, quick approach. As you can tell, you still have sky, you still have these images. So first off, here's one of them. The original more detailed masking and here down here is one of the just cavalier rectangle as you can tell off to the left is desirable for surveying whereas off to the right still has a lot of point clouds so the main takeaway lesson from this is the more time you spend masking the more accurate of a point cloud you're going to get the fewer points that you do not want. This is a step that I highly recommend spending as much time as possible on. Hope this tutorial helped and best of luck to you and all your structure for motion masking needs.